Hello, my name is John Ford and welcome to my Proxmox Automated Environment Provisioning Full Course Series. In the last video, we went ahead and we set up PFSense that we'll be using as our firewall as a virtual machine within Proxmox. In this video, I'm going to talk about starting PFSense for the first time and how we're going to configure the interfaces on PFSense so that it has internet access and can later be used with our management machine. We're going to do this from within the console of PFSense. Hopefully this will make more sense when we start doing it. So let's dig right in. To start my PFSense virtual machine, I'm going to head over to console and click start now. It may take a while for PFSense to boot up. I have paused the video and waited until PFSense has finished booting. And you can see it is now asking me to accept the copyright and distribution notice. I'll hit enter to accept. From there, I can select install. I will simply hit enter. Auto on ZFS is fine. I will hit enter. And all looks good, so I'll hit enter again. And I will hit enter one more time. In order to select the disk that it was able to locate, I will press the space bar to select it and hit enter again. And from here, I am sure that I would like to install PFSense so I'm going to press the left arrow key and again hit enter. Now I'm going to wait until the Proxmox installation finishes. Once this is complete, I would like to reboot into PFSense, so I'm simply going to hit enter. It may take some time for the system to reboot. I'm going to again skip ahead until the system has fully rebooted. Once PFSense has fully rebooted, we can see it will ask us a series of questions that will help us set up PFSense for the first time. The first question asks if we should set up VLANs. Depending on your environment, you may be using a VLAN if your Proxmox instance is connected to a switch. In my case, I don't have to worry about this. So I'm just going to say N in order to avoid setting up VLANs and press Enter. From there, we can choose our WAN interface. As we talked about previously, this will be the VTNet0. Now from here, we need to choose our LAN interface. Our only remaining interface is VTNet1. If this looks good, we will click Y to proceed. Once PFSense has finished booting, you'll want to set the IP addresses for each of these interfaces. In my case, the IP addresses seem to have been set accordingly. However, I will still showcase this process in case they have not been set accordingly for your installation. It is important to note whether for the WAN you would like to have a static IP address or whether you plan to be assigned an IP address through DHCP. Depending on your network configuration and your IP address assignment for Proxmox, that will determine which way you would like to go. In the case of Illinois Institute of Technology, to obtain a public IP address, I request a DHCP static lease. This means that I provide my interface's MAC address and I will receive back an IP address that I can obtain through DHCP. Note that to find your interface's MAC address, you can always go back to the hardware tab and look at the network device that is associated with that interface. 
the MAC address will be listed there. Anyway, I'm going to set Interface's IP address for the WAN. To do so, I will select Option 2 and press Enter. Then I will select 1 for WAN and press Enter. I do, in fact, want to configure the IPv4 address through DHCP. As I mentioned earlier, the public IP address will be assigned to me through a static DHCP lease. If this wasn't the case, you could always answer no to this question by typing N and pressing Enter. In this case, I'm going to type Y and press Enter. I would like to do the same thing for DHCP6. So I'll press Y and select Enter. At the end, it asks if I would like to revert to HTTP as the Web Configurator Protocol. This basically means that I would be able to access PFSense's web interface through HTTP rather than HTTPS. I do not want to make this change because this is not a good security practice. And so I will select N for no and press enter. Now in a moment, all of the changes that I recently requested will be applied. When I get this message, I can select enter to go back to the configuration screen. Now I'm going to configure my LAN's IP address. I'm going to do so by selecting 2 and pressing Enter. This time I'm going to enter 2 for LAN. Because PFSense is going to be providing DHCP on the LAN, in other words, no other DHCP servers are present on the LAN, I would like to configure a static IP address. So I'm going to answer no to this question and press enter. This is going to allow me to configure a static IP address. As I mentioned before, my network is 192.168.1.0. However, the IP address that I will provide for PFSense on this network will end in dot one. Next, I have to enter the subnet mask in CIDR notation for this network. As I previously mentioned, I'm going to enter 24 and select enter. For this option, it says for WAN, enter the new LAN IPv4 upstream gateway address. For a LAN, press enter for none. In this case, we are using a LAN, and so we are simply going to press enter. I do not care to configure IPv6 for the LAN, so I'm just going to say no to this question. And when it asks for a LAN IPv6 address, I am simply going to press enter for none. I do, in fact, want to enable DHCP on my LAN, so that I can serve DHCP to other machines that join the LAN. In this case, my management machine. For this, I will press Y and select Enter. Now it's asking for the start address of the IPv4 client address range. Keep in mind that I already used 192.168.1.1, so I will have to choose IP addresses above that one. I'll choose 192.168.1.10 as the start address. Now it asks for the end address. I will say 192.168.1.254 and select enter. Now again, it asks whether I would like to revert to HTTP as the web configurator protocol. And again, I will select no because I would like to keep it as HTTPS or HTTP secure. Then I will press enter. Once these changes are saved, I can press enter again to go back to the main configuration page. 
you'll notice that the WAN and LAN IPv4 addresses are set accordingly. PFSense is also providing DHCP automatically to the LAN interface. This means that if I create a management machine and attach it to the same bridge on Proxmox that this LAN interface is attached to, it will automatically be assigned an IP address through DHCP. While I'm working with this management interface, the last thing I'm going to want to do is enable Secure Shell. Secure Shell will allow the Proxmox and PFSense remote management scripts to be able to access PFSense and make changes to it remotely. In order to do that, you can see option 14 is called Enable Secure Shell. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 14 and press Enter. Now it asks me if I would like to enable SSHD or Secure Shell, and I would. So I'm going to type in Y and press Enter. Now SSH is enabled, and it should be accessible on the LAN interface. In addition to enabling SSH, I should change the PFSense root password to something else so that I can SSH into PFSense securely. In order to do that, I am going to provide myself with shell access to PFSense by choosing option 8 and pressing enter. From here, I can change the root password with PASSWD. For the sake of this demo, I'm just going to make the password password with a capital P, one, two, three, exclamation point. However, I recommend choosing a secure password here. Then, once I finish typing in my password and press enter, I will enter it once again. And press enter again. And the password has been changed. With these changes, I should be able to SSH into PFSense remotely to make configuration changes remotely. I can always exit this root shell and go back to the management interface by typing in exit and pressing enter. We are now ready to go ahead and set up our management machine that we will use to finish configuring PFSense.